Hey, hello. Welcome to Yellow Brick Road Reselling. Guess what it is? It is the end of a month, beginning of a new month. So we just ended March. It's now April. And I just got an email saying that my invoice for March is ready. So I want to go ahead and run my reports for eBay. And I thought I would bring you along with me so we can take a look at them. Okay, here is my seller hub for my eBay store. And I run three reports. I think there's three. <laughs> we'll find out if these are all the ones that I need, but three reports that I will need to reconcile my eBay sales and all that kind of stuff. So first, let's go and find my invoice. It is always difficult to know exactly where your invoice is. I was just talking to my sister on the phone telling her where to find it. And I'm like, where did I find that again? So you know what the quickest and easiest way is, is for me to go into my messages. And then you'll see there's a eBay invoice message from eBay. You can also sort it by from eBay, but this was recent. So I knew it was close by. I'll come down here. My invoice is for $108. I am on managed payments. So my invoice, which you'll see here in a second, Okay, here is my invoice. So let's take a look and see what we need from this invoice to reconcile our expenses and stuff for the month. So I see my previous balance and I paid it. Here's your subscription to one-time fees. I have a premium store, so I pay $59.95. Shipping fees, this is if you have any overages. So if you didn't ship correctly and you uh, need to pay more or if you got a refund, then that will be on here for USPS. Or if you use FedEx, um, I don't know if UPS is on here or not, but this is my FedEx charges. Promoted listing fees, if you are promoting anything, that will be in this invoice, as well as here's some credits. So any kind of credits and discounts. That's what I have for this month. Those are mine. All right, so then it breaks it down. It has, again, it shows my invoice. It shows my, where I paid it. And then these are the items that I sold, but the person never paid on this one. They never even paid. So I did have an ad fee. This 153 is the credits that I got back. And then this was actually a return. Somebody bought it and returned it. So I ended up getting a credit back on that promoted ad that I had paid previous month. I got a credit for those. And when you have a store subscription, you do get this seller selling manager pro for free so that actually zeroes out and then terapeut comes part of it but it's on your invoice even though it's zero and then there's my premium store subscription fee as well as i was talking about my fedex shipping fees they're on this and then my promoted ads all of this is all promoted ads all right so that is that invoice let me show you the other invoice that i end up printing so we're back on seller hub and on Seller Hub, there's this Payments tab. This is actually another way you can get to your invoices. I forgot that they actually started putting these on here. But under Payments, if you are on Managed Payments, you would come here under Reports. If you are not on Managed Payments and you're still having PayPal as your main payment processor, then I would go to PayPal and run a report there to find out what your fees are for PayPal for the month. Okay, under Reports. So you can see here we have uh, reports and there's statements and then there's invoices. So if I wanted to, I could have just come here and printed off my re invoice for March. And then they have this tax invoice. I'm not really sure what that is. I'll have to check that out later. Then you have your statements, your financial statement. Let's preview that. Let's see what's on that re report. All right, opening funds, total transactions, payouts, closing funds, my orders, refunds, total disputes, shipping labels. So that's nice. Here's your total for shipping labels. You'll need that for your taxes. Other fees. Let's find out what this 888 is. Oh, it doesn't show you. Download to see full report. All right, let's download it.
Okay, I want to see what that 888 is. All right, so download it for your full report. Literally, your full report is what it just showed you. All right, that did nothing. So downloading it didn't do anything. So let's go back, and I want to click on reports. All right, so we've printed our invoice. Statements will give you your specifically your shipping, which is really good information to have. And then under reports, I'm going to run this report. Um, okay, this is all 2020. So see, I ran all these reports when I was doing my taxes in February. I ran them all for last year. I didn't even know that this report was something I needed to be to pulling. That's one reason why I wanted to do this video was to show you to make sure you're capturing your managed payment, things that are taken out of your pay payments. Uh, so let's run a report. So I'm gonna go transaction report. I wanna pull up available funds. I wanna do everything. There's also a payout report. So if you wanna know every payout that you got and then your 1099 detailed report, but I just wanna do a transaction report and I'm gonna pull it for this month. So it has all of these, you can run it. If you wanna just know all your refunds for the year, for the month, for the quarter, all of this stuff, you can run a report just an, amongst whatever time frame you put in. I'm gonna do it just for the month of March. So I'm gonna put in March's dates and I'm gonna say create report. It does say that it's in progress. It only takes a few minutes. So you can refresh here and it will tell you, or I just refresh sometimes even up here in the top where your little refreshes for the page. But let's check refresh. There it is. It's all ready to go. I'm going to download it. So it does download it in a CSV file. So you would need like Excel to open it and manipulate it. All right, so my sister goes, oh, it's in CSV. And I said, um, I'm like, yeah, but you can just go. What I usually do is right away I'll go and save as, and I will save it as, let me do, let me just put it in my documents. I actually have a folder, but I'll just throw it in here now. I just save it as an Excel workbook. That way it's already saved outside of a CSV, so it just makes it easier for I don't want it that wide. <laughs> Let's show the date. And it is nice to see these different labels. Um, I'm just going to show you what I normally do. So a lot of this stuff, I'll save it. And then I manipulate it quite a bit because I don't need a lot of this stuff. Like legacy order ID. Like I don't really care. Now, obviously they change the way they do order numbers. And this is probably more for their their you know, eBay's business stuff than what I need. Um, a lot of times I don't even care about the buyer username and all that. So what, I, what I'll do is I'll save a copy of this. And I will start manipulating it. So I will say, okay, I need a transaction date. All of this up here, I actually end up getting rid of all of this. Do what's best for you. I'm just showing you what, what's good for me. I don't need an order number, legacy order number. I don't care who my buyer is, my buyer's name, my ship to city. I don't need any of that stuff. I do keep the ship to province, region, or state because I'll need this for my um, sales tax report. Even though eBay collects sales tax for me and remits it, I still need to report the numbers to New York on what my sales were for New Yorkers. And then I just say, but I have zero tax liability. Um, when I get these, actually, let me see if I can make this. I just looked over at my screen just to see how big it is. It's probably tiny for you. Let me see. How do I, here we go. Let me just make this bigger for you. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit for you to see in my Excel what I do. All right, so we have the transaction date, which I just like to see. Um, the type, which I'll need this for when I fill out what type of, you'll, you'll see. 
<laughs> ship two, I'm just going to keep that. I'm going to shrink it because I know it's just literally the state. Um, ship two zip code. I don't need this. Ship to country. I don't need. So I'm going to delete these. Again, this is my copy. So I keep one that has all the stuff on it. So if I end up doing something I don't like, I can actually resort back to that one and start over again if I need to. The net amount, the payout, right? This is all U.S. So sometimes if I'm not sure, I'll just go through. Everything should say U.S., which it does. So when in doubt, I'll always just double check. I don't need that. I'm going to delete that. I don't care. I get paid in the U.S. dollars. Um, payout date. For what I'm doing now, I don't need that or this. I I get rid of all of this stuff. Let me just see. Reason four. Okay, there's nothing in that column. So I am going to delete this reason for whatever it is. I'm going to delete that. Um, item ID, I don't need. Transaction ID, I don't need. I am going to keep my item title because it is nice for me when I'm doing something, you'll see uh, for me just to at least see what it is. Custom label, I definitely need that. How many I sold. Item subtotal, we're going to keep that. Shipping and handling. Now, this is how much shipping that the buyer paid, right? You know, most of the time I have free shipping, but there are times when I have it where the buyer pays. So this is buyer paid shipping. Seller collected tax. I don't have any of that. I'm actually going to delete that because I don't collect any tax because I have a state where eBay collects it for my state. You see eBay collected tax. Final value fee. And final value fee variable. So your final value fee fixed. This is your managed payment fee. So 30 cents is what they collect for every time somebody pays you. Final value fee is your percentage based upon your sale price. I am going to get rid of this eBay collected tax because I don't need that for anything that I do. Very high item, not as described fee. So if you fall into that where you have a lot of returns, then eBay will start charging, I think it's like 3 or 4%. If you have that fee, then that would be listed here. I don't have it, so I'm going to get rid of it. Below standard, I am not below standard. International, I am going to keep that because I probably have some items in here. Yep, there's 26 cents. So this international, this 33 cents, this 26 up here. This is if you have an international buyer with managed payments, they actually charge you an additional percentage to convert the euros into dollars and whatever, pesos into dollars, whoever, whatever, how they're paying you is to convert it. So that is an international fee for your international orders. Now, you might be saying, oh, I don't want to sell international. I make money on international. I make money on shipping because I use pirate ships, simple export rate. And it is well worth it for me to ship international and pay this very, very small international fee. Uh, your gross transaction amount, I'll just leave that. Uh, transaction currency, I don't need that. Exchange rate, I don't think there's anything in this. There's not, so I delete that. Again, I'm just kind of cleaning it up to stuff that I need because it's a very large report. And if I don't need all that stuff, then I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, so these are just, I don't know, reference numbers. I don't know, reference ID. Again, I don't need it. I'm going to delete that. And a description ad fee. eBay delivery services shipping label fee. Okay, I'll leave that. I don't think I'll end up needing it, but we'll find out. Let's just keep it just in case. That's a little longer. I'm just going to make that a little bigger. All right, I'm going to go back over here to the top. So now that I have gotten rid of all of the columns I don't need, and I know I could have just hit them and done all that, but I just, again, I make a copy of it. So I just delete everything. And if I end up needing it, I'll go back to the original. I'm going to highlight line A all the way to, in this case, it's N, column N. I'm going to highlight that and go up under sort and filter and click on filter. And that gives you the ability now to go in and filter so I can sort under this like transaction date I can say sort by A through Z so it would start with like March 1st and then go to March 31st you can sort by that 
or I can go over here, which is what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort by the type. And I changed it. So now it's sorted by the type. So what's this going to do is it's going to put every time my money was on hold. I'm going to see that. So these are all people who either had a return or a dispute or something like that. And then you'll see all the orders are here in one. And then we got other fees, or refunds. So there's my refunds that I had. Which that's funny, that's not really a refund. They never paid. This person returned it. And this person, I refunded them because I had to cancel that order. Um, and then there's all my shipping labels. All right, so it'll be interesting. We can look at, let's total up. I'll do the totals that I do, and then we'll compare it to some of the other reports that we have. All right, I'm going to come back up here to the top. What I'd want to do first is find out what was my total sales for the month. So that's my orders right here. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll click on the top order. I'll go to the bottom order. And then I just kind of highlight and change that to another color. So I hit the shift key and then hit the last one and it will highlight the whole column, the whole section from the from where you clicked first to the bottom one. So I'm going to just put that as orange. So I just got a sale. Yeah, I don't think you heard it, but I just got a sale. I had to see what I sold. Um, so here we go. So I got those. So it just makes it a little easier for me. So all of this, this March, I'm actually going to like even shrink that way down because it doesn't really matter to me. I probably could even delete that column. It doesn't, that doesn't make a difference because this is all March. So what I want is up here is the item subtotal, right? So that's that plus the shipping, the final value, all that. So what I want to do is find out what are my total sales for the month. So right now my total sales start right here which is this orange, which I could have also highlighted the whole, the whole column as orange. It just makes it easier for me instead of freezing the columns and the rows and all that kind of stuff, makes it easier for me to see where to start. So if I was to do that, normally I would have this, this would all fit on the screen. So remember how I like shrunk all this for you? This is what I would do if I was not showing you guys, right? It would be, this is at 100%. So if I wasn't expanding it to you guys, I wouldn't need to do all this colors because I would be able to see right in my screen at once all my stuff. But because I am making it bigger so you guys can see what I'm doing, I am adding these other colors just to make it easier for me. Okay, so here we are. So we are in this column H. This is our total sales. So it is... Um, H16. So what I'll do is I'll go down to the bottom and I want to subtotal it. Now for you Excel wizards, there's probably things out there that you can do that would just do this. I had a, a friend who was so good at writing formulas. I'm, I'm not good at that. So I don't, I don't do it. I know basic to get around Excel, but not the deep extended it's been a long time since I've done it. So I clicked on auto sum when I was down at the bottom. And then you click on the field that you want to start with. And in this case, it's going to be this H16 is the field number. So you can click it and then just drag it down and highlight what you want to total. So in this case, I want to total all of this stuff that's in orange right to here. That is going to be my total sales for the month. So once you highlight it, you can just hit, so put in this formula right here. You can hit this check mark that's up here or just hit your enter key on your keyboard. So that shows that I had $3,383 in orders last month. Next is I actually want to do that same thing with the same um, fields as H16 all the way down to this column, which this column was how much my customers paid in shipping. 
I'm surprised how much I actually collected in shipping last year or last month. Most of my items are free. So one quick way to do that is just to highlight this, which is already doing H16 to H168. And I just click on this little thing and pull it over and it will automatically change it to I16 to I68. So that's going to give me my total. So this is my total orders. And this is the total, total buyer shipping. Right, so that's the buyer paid shipping. And if I want to do that same thing, I could pull it over to all these columns and have them total up. This column will go up. I think this was my fees for using managed payments. Yep, it's your final value fee for managed payments is next. And then after that is your final value fee variable, which is your final value fee. And then the international fee. So I'm going to go all the way back to the bottom and I just type that in. So this is my final value fee, managed payments, and final value fee, and then international. Those are my fees that I have right now for selling on eBay. These are my eBay fees plus what was on that first invoice that we ran, which had my store fees, that kind of stuff, promoted listing fees. So next on this report shows how much I paid in shipping. Right here where it says shipping label. So shipping label goes all the way to here. And let's just make that blue. So I want to figure out from D186, what is the total cost for my shipping? So I'm going to do the same thing like I did over there. I'm going to hit auto sum, take it from the bottom, and I'm going to go all the way up to that D. There we go. Right here. Hit enter. So I spent $665 in shipping on eBay shipping. That does not include... The FedEx that I have that's on the other invoice, it does not include pirate ship. And then also on this report, I will grab the total. So this other fee. So these totals right here should equal my promoted listings. So let's go down and put, we'll just put it over here. Promoted listings. Whoops. Let's just add that here. So I'm going to hit auto sum, but I'm going to go back up. It highlighted all this, but I'm going to unhighlight. I'm going to start here and highlight to here. And that's going to give me promoted listings of $8.88. Remember, we saw that on that invoice. I was like, what is that $8.88? It doesn't tell me. Now this is what it is. Now I know what it is. The other thing is, is if you wanted to know over here, I'm just going to write in refunds. I do that just because I like everything close up in front of me. I'm going to hit auto sum again. And over here was my refunds. This is what I refund, refunded. So I had $83.56 in refunds last month. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Refunds, orders, holds. Holds I don't care about because most of these you'll see they come on and they come off and so forth. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. And then I don't know what these are. Oh, okay. So these are actually somebody bought like more than one item. So these are the people like this person bought these two items, this one bought these two, and then somebody bought four items. That's what this is. So this I need to add this right here needs to be added to my item subtotal. So see how it doesn't say order right here. It should say it. Let me see the date they paid that. Let's say March 18th was Florida. I'll just come down here to March 18th. I want to just see if there's Florida. I wonder if that's what this is. I think it is, but it's not showing all the fees and stuff, but it is up here. Okay, so we do need to include these into our total. Um, let me just see. 
See how there's nothing between here and here? So it says order here. I'm just going to change it from starting at H16. I'm going to have it start at H2. Am I confusing you guys? I'm sorry about that, but I just need to capture those numbers up there. So I actually just need to change this formula from H16. Now, had there been numbers in between there or another, like if my refunds fell in there or something else, then I wouldn't do that. I'm going to have this recalculate all these totals. Okay, so now these totals are up to date. So now we should see this is what my orders were. This is how much the buyers paid in shipping. Um, I am going to take these two and add them together. And this total, which I'm just going to bold so I can know, is the total of these two. And this is what I should see total of my sales should be a total of this. It should include that shipping. And then final value, final value, and international. My refunds, how much I paid in shipping, and how much promoted listings were. All right, let's go back to that other report. Hold on, I got to see if I can get to it. Okay, so now we're back on our invoice from eBay. And it says here, promoted listings fee is $23, $23.58. I'm going to go back to Excel. And here it says promoted listings was $8.88. So I wonder why the difference. So it must be some of those ad fees came out of my, some of those ad fees came out of my invoice or my managed payment, but some of them were on my invoice. I wonder why the difference. Let's see if it goes all the way through the whole month. It starts, okay, so it goes till March 22nd. I'm wondering if they changed how they were doing it after March 23rd, they started taking it from your managed payments payment. That's why it's only $8.88 on managed payments, but $23 on my invoice. So let's go back to my Excel and where I had these ad fees. Yeah, look at this. See how it's March 23rd is the first one? To March 31st. So what eBay did was they used to put it on your monthly invoice and you would pay your promoted listing fees at the end of the month. But starting on March 23rd, they started taking those fees out of your um, payouts. And I have weekly payouts. Yours may have started coming out sooner if you had daily payouts. Mine was weekly payouts. So my payout was on March 23rd. And then they started on March 23rd taking it out from that payout. So, okay, that's why. Because I was like, I don't remember seeing these other fees on my invoices last month and my reports. This was new. And that is that is why. So that's something that's changed. Okay, so let's go back to Seller Hub. And we were looking at the statements. I'm saying that with a question. All right, that was preview. Let's go back to this. So this financial statement, this is all to do with your managed payments. So this should equal what that Excel spreadsheet shows. So it says here, my orders, total minus fees. Okay, so it would be that 344212 would be total minus fees. So let's see if that's true. So my total is this, and we need to minus this. So let's see if we do that. Let me do auto sum this minus fees is three four four two twelve. I think that equaled it. Three four four two twelve. That equals claims. I had none. Refunds was eighty three fifty six. Okay, refunds here eighty three fifty six. That's correct. That's what that says eighty three fifty six. I'm sorry, I should have made this bigger for you guys also. 
Let's see if that helps. Sorry about that. All right, refunds, 83.56. Payment disputes is nothing. Shipping labels, 665.69. And that is what we have on our Excel, 665.69 right here. And then we saw the 888. I already know that's correct. That's our rest, rest of our promoted listing fees. So now what I need to do is I need to take this report and add in my invoice and get my total fees and all the information that I need for eBay. So I need to combine the two of them. So what I'll do is, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to try and let me try this. Can you see? Oh, yeah, you can see them side by side. Okay, good. I was hoping you'd be able to see these side by side. Let's do this. I'm doing this different because I'm showing you guys than what I normally do. But I do something very, very, very similar. Similar. Um, I like a snapshot of what my what my total fees have been a snapshot of everything in one. So I got this eBay report here. I got this Excel report here. So I'm now going to combine them into, into one. And I know there's probably an easier way to do this, but I'm, this is how I do it. Uh, I'm going to put in my total orders, buyer paid shipping. These are the things I have, right? And then I got shipping by well, I'm just going to say total shipping, total shipping expense. I'll just say expense. <laughs> um, promoted listings. And then I have final value fee for managed payments, final value fees for everything, final value fees for international. And oh, I have FedEx which I could put that up there with my total shipping expense. But I do put it separate into my report than when I put it into my uh, accounting software. All right, so we have orders. I'm going to put the total orders, not what's on this report here to the right. I'm going to go over here and do this. My total is 30. Well, I can just do this H322. H322. Someday I'm going to take the time and actually create a report where I just hit the go and it does this all this for me. Buyer paid shipping was H322. I mean, I'm not HI322. Did I say H? I meant I. Oops, I forgot to put the plus sign. And then we have total shipping expense for us was right here, the 665.69, which is actually D322. And then promoted listings. Now we have two promoted listings. So I'm going to actually add, um, no, I'll just add them together. So we know we have $8.88, which is here on the right. Okay, so on promoted listings, I have the 888 that's from my managed payments report. And then I also have promoted listings right here, which is the 2358. So um, final value fee managed payments, that is this one right here, J322. This is going to be K. This is L. And then FedEx is over here on my shipping fees, which is twenty six twenty nine. So I'm going to just put in twenty six twenty nine. And then I also have my store subscription which is $59.95. And then we did have this promoted listing fee credit of $1.53. So 
So I'm actually going to come up here and then minus a dollar fifty three, and that will capture our everything on our invoice, which is right here the fifty nine, the twenty six twenty nine to 2358 is under here under the promoted listings and then the credit of a dollar 53 right here under promoted listings okay so now we have our invoice plus everything that was on this excel spreadsheet which i'm going to make this back big so we don't need our invoice anymore that's going to give us everything that we need for expenses except for I also track my cost of goods sold here on my expense report or whatever this form is called, my transaction report. So if we come back up here, you'll see I have this custom SKU area, custom label. I'm going to add a column next to it. And you'll notice that all of my when you do that in Excel, I'm just going to come to the bottom to show you. All of these that had those formulas remain the same. They just moved them over instead of this being, oh, this was moved. Like whatever one of these, right? This used to be J, K. This used to be K. Now it was L because Excel is smart enough to know that. So it didn't mess with my formulas down below. I just wanted in case somebody was worried about that. So this is my cost of goods sold. And then what I'll do is I first will go through anything that has a quantity of more than one. I need to look at those first because I need to take this cost of goods sold of 648. So we'll do 648 and I'm going to multiply it by two. Because that is my cost of goods sold for this sale is $12.96. So I'll go down and do that first because sometimes I just forget. So this is $24 because it's $12. So my custom SKU has the location of where I store it, the store where I purchased it, in this case Walmart, and how much I paid. I paid $12 a piece for these and I sold two of them. So they went for $24. And this one is $4.50, so it's $9. Sometimes I don't need Excel to calculate it for me. I'm smart enough to do it myself. Okay, so that's it for multiple orders. So then what I'll do is I'll just go through and I'll say, okay, there's a dollar, six ninety-nine, five sixteen, dollar seventy-four, two twenty-four, two ninety-seven. So these right here that don't have cost of goods, I got to look these up. I think I paid, uh, I'm almost positive I paid $19.99 for each of these. They're actually albums I purchased. So I'm actually going to put in $19.99. I'm almost positive that's what I paid for them. So if there's nothing here, that's because I never put anything in the custom label because I didn't know exactly how much I paid at the time when I was listing it. And um, I wasn't sure where I was going to be storing it. Literally listed these and they sold before I had a place to actually store them. Um, all right, this happy planner. Yeah, see these, uh, these are part of the ones. If you've been watching my lives in the morning, every time I sell something and I say, oh, that's that one I need to find out what my cost of goods are. I don't know what my cost of good is for this item. I'm going to just move it over so I can see what it is. This is why I keep the item name because sometimes it's easier for me. I'm just going to shrink these so I can show you guys it all on the screen. It doesn't go off the screen since I increased the font size so you can read. So this is some classic um, hourly paper. Most likely I didn't pay more than four. So I'm just going to put four in here. But I will go back at some point and change that. Um, this is another album from that same thing. Old World Santa with Toys, Slay, and Reindeer. Okay, that was a garage sale find. I'm just going to say three bucks. Sometimes I guesstimate on these because... I've had them listed for so long and I've changed the way I was doing things that sometimes I just don't know. Um, this Weight Watchers points calculator, this doesn't matter in the long run because it was returned. So I don't have a cost of goods because it's gonna, it came right back to me. Um, 648, 648. <laughs>
your cost of goods. I know some people do it like as soon as they buy it, they have it individually and they put stuff in. I don't do it that way. I think that's it, folks. Um, okay, those were refunds. Now, were they up above? I remember this one was, right? But we didn't put a price in. So let me just do minus five and minus a dollar. I'm going to come down here. And this is going to be my cost of goods. So let's auto sum this. From here all the way up. Ta -da! Cost of goods. So there's my cost of goods. So let's do um, cost of goods times negative one to make that a negative number. Um, and then we can look at so buyer pay that's positive, promoted listings. This needs to be a negative. There might be an easier way to do this. Uh, again, I I just like, this is just how I do it. Okay. Wow, well, wait a minute. That didn't make that a negative. Oh, because I forgot to put minus. It's expense, expense. And so anything that's an expense, I just want it to be a negative because I'm going to have it auto sum stuff sales subscription so we can see how much did i really make last month not counting obviously running to the store uh, mileage all that kind of stuff because that gets spread across all of the platforms that i sell on not just ebay but just for ebay my sales were 35.87 buyer paid this so I think it was what 39.48 was my total sales after all my expenses I ended up netting 16.57 on eBay just eBay so then what I'll do is I go over to inventory lab and I will input all of this into inventory lab which I have another video on that which I will put hold on I'm gonna look right here. <laughs> I'll put right here a link to that video if you want to see how I do my accounting and track stuff for um, for eBay, all my platforms. I manually enter all of my accounting into Inventory Lab because with, if you sell on Amazon, having Inventory Lab is amazing because Amazon's reports and stuff are so convoluted and so confusing, so much worse than eBay, that having Inventory Lab be able to gather all that stuff and put it into an, an accounting report for you is so helpful that I just use that platform and then just input all the other stuff. So I'll do the same thing for the other platforms I sell on, on Etsy and Bonanza, Macari, Poshmark. I got stuff in Kitizen, but haven't sold anything yet. Facebook Marketplace. Um, I'll do all of that and input that stuff into Inventory Lab. Okay, so the other report that I forgot to show you guys is I run an unsold report. When I sell something on Etsy or Poshmark, Mercari, any of those other platforms, and I cross post everything, everything starts on eBay and then goes to the other ones. I will come on to eBay and I will end the listing if it's the only one that I have. So those items, I'll, I'll need the custom SKU to run my cost of goods reports for the platforms, the other platforms that I sell on. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and click on listings unsold. And here you see, these are all of the items that I have sold on other platforms that did not sell here on, at, on eBay. I know. I'm going fast because I just wanted to show you this is why I cross post. Look at all these items. 
This is all in the last 90 days that I've sold on other platforms that I had listed originally on eBay. Okay, close your eyes. There you go. Because <laughs> I was going all the way up and sometimes people don't like that. So what I'll do is I'll come up here and they have this section over here. I'm going to print this. So what I would do is I would print this report. So I would have all of the, I would save it as a PDF. And then it's going to have all these custom SKUs for me. So when I'm doing my report for Etsy, so anybody that was watching this morning, I'm going to just cancel this. So like these three things right here, I sold on Etsy and, and packaged this morning. So I would need this to be able to do my cost of goods. So I will run that report. If you forget and it goes past 90 days, you will lose your data. eBay only keeps data for 90 days. So you can see down below. January 4th. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. It does have January 3rd. Well, it goes all the way back to January 2nd, which is surprising. But look at no photos. All this stuff is gets, it goes away after 90 days. So I have to do this. I'll try and remember to do every single month, the beginning of the month. I'll run these reports when I'm doing my reports. And I'll run this one because I didn't do it last year until June, I think is when I was like, hey, I really got to catch up my accounting. And I completely had forgotten that eBay gets rid of stuff. And I did not have my cost of goods for all of that time. And it was really just a pain to try and recreate everything. So I will go in and run this report every single month. So I will have that. I used to do it to my sold report also, my, I, my orders, all orders. But now that I'm on managed payments, oh my gosh, it's so easy because it's now on that Excel spreadsheet that I ran, that transaction report. It's in that report. So, so helpful. Thank you, eBay, for that. I really appreciate it. Made my life so much easier. Okay, now that is it. Those are the three reports for eBay that I run. The transaction report, my invoice, and my unsold. So I have those cost of goods for the other platforms. Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry, it was probably kind of tedious. Hopefully in editing, I'll be able to fast forward or do something that just makes that time go away. A little quicker. You might lose some of the tidbits that I left here and there as I was doing it, but I just want it to be a nice streamlined um, thing for you so you can see what I do and hopefully it will help you. And if you have a better way that you do this, I know some of you use like GoDaddy and it imports that into GoDaddy. It'll take all that stuff and put it in it. I'm not sure if QuickBooks does it, but GoDaddy just does that it doesn't do all the Amazon stuff. If it did it, maybe I would think about it. But Inventory Lab is so important for me for uh, for Amazon that I just manually will take this time and do it. But as you can see, it didn't take me that time. Let's see, I've been recording for one hour. So in one hour's time, I can get this whole report done and get my stuff done for the month and be done with it. So it's really not that bad. And I was talking to you guys. If I wasn't, it would have been a lot quicker. I probably can get it done easily within a half hour. Okay, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Hit the thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. As well as that little bell notification next to the subscribe. It'll let you know when I go live. I go live pretty much now every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. I showed you what I sold over the last two days or the weekend like this morning. While I'm packaging stuff, I chat with you, talk about whatever comes up in the chat, as well as whatever comes up in my mind. And uh, every now and then I'll drop a pre-recorded video like this one. So hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. See ya. Bye.